Greetings on this Independence Day 2021. I'm Pastor Sally Stewart of Felton Viola United Methodist Church, and we want to welcome you to our worship service today. This year, July 4th falls on a Sunday, so we want to be sure to recognize the significance of this day in the history of our country. Last week, I said that we were going to move on from First and Second Samuel and King David, but it turns out that that wasn't true. We're going to stick with him one more week. Today, we're going to talk about unity, both those of us that are people of faith, our country, and our world. Let's turn our hearts toward God and begin our worship as we sing In Christ Alone. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Holy One, we are so thankful for this nation, for all of the sacrifices that others have made to build and defend this country. We are grateful. Thank you for the opportunities and the freedoms we have in this United States of America. Help us never to take these blessings for granted. Allow us to appreciate the good things this country provides while refraining from the temptation to see ourselves as superior to your children in other lands. Help us acknowledge your love for our siblings all around the globe while fully embracing our love for this wonderful land called America. Help us live our lives in ways that glorify you, Lord. Give us the strength to be a blessing in someone's life today and grant us the opportunity to lead others into the freedom that can be found in knowing Jesus Christ. In your name we pray. Amen. Our scripture today comes from 2 Samuel chapter 5, starting at verse 1. Then all the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, Look, we are your bone and flesh. For some time, while Saul was king over us, it was you who led out Israel and brought it in. The Lord said to you, It is you who shall be the shepherd of my people Israel, you who shall be ruler over Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king at Hebron, and King David made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed King David over Israel. David was thirty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned forty years. At Hebron he reigned over Judah seven years and six months, and at Jerusalem he reigned over all Israel and Judah thirty-three years. David occupied the stronghold and named it the City of David. David built the city all around him from Milo inward, and David became greater and greater, for the Lord, the God of hosts, was with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Where were you when you first heard that a plane had hit the World Trade Center in New York City on 9-11-2001? I'm sure that that's one of those times in your life when you can remember and identify exactly where you were and what you were doing on that sunny September morning. I was sitting in my mother's kitchen as I did most day, most weekday mornings before heading to work. The news was on the small television set in the corner, but honestly we weren't paying too much attention until the timber of the announcer's voice made us both look up. We sat for the next few minutes trying to grasp what was happening trying to make sense of the scene that we were watching. We weren't alone. Many of you were watching it with us. It was a feeling like none I had ever had before. I remember hearing about the Kennedy assassinations and the Challenger disaster, but this was different somehow. We would come to understand how different in the weeks and months ahead as our country came to grips with the fact that there were people in the world who hated us enough to coordinate such an attack. I remember feeling like the world was spinning out of control and being confused as to why anyone would have such dark thoughts about our wonderful country. I was naive, and it took a long time for me to begin to understand the psychology of extremist organizations like the terrorist group Al-Qaeda. What I do remember vividly was the initial reaction of people in my town and all around the nation. We'd been attacked and they weren't just attacking some of us, they were attacking all of us. So in response, it seemed like we all pulled together. At the time, I owned a shop and one of the things we sold were really nice American flags. Not the printed ones, they're, they're okay, but the ones with embroidered stars and sewn stripes that last a long time and, and don't fade. If I sound like a flag snob, well, I'll own that a little bit. The time I got to, by the time I got to work that morning, there were people lined up outside my shop. 
Within minutes, every U.S. flag I had in stock, no matter what the size, was gone. And I was on the phone trying to order more. You can imagine how that worked out. Think last April trying to get toilet paper. By the time I went home that afternoon, nearly every street in town looked like this. Houses and businesses on every street had flags flying. I could barely see to, to drive because I kept tearing up. I was so emotional with a combination of resolve and pride. I don't remember another time in my lifetime when our nation was more unified and cohesive. No one seemed concerned about nationalities or political affiliations. We were solidly together in our desire to resist terrorism. I thought at the time how proud I was of how our country felt united and how that translated into a feeling I called patriotism. Today is Independence Day, when all of us are supposed to be in touch with that same feeling. The feeling of love and pride for our country that we live in, but these days I'm sad to admit that it's harder to feel that way. Oh, I still love this country, and I'm still delighted to live here, but events lately have made it harder to frame our nation in the radiant glow of those post 9-11 days. I've had to come to terms with the fact that the rosy, unblemished country I envisioned back then doesn't exist, really never existed. And it was only my resistance to seeing her flaws that cast her in that light. Let me tell you what that means to me. The unity and resolve we felt in late 2001 didn't last. And today, nearly 20 years later, we find ourselves less unified than ever. In our passage from 2 Samuel, King Saul is, is out and, and King David is taking over. We discovered a, a few weeks ago that God had warned Israel that they, they wouldn't like Saul as king. And what do you know? God was right. Saul turned out to be a disaster as king. And the people were discouraged and confrontational. Their society was chaos and no one had any idea what to do to change the situation. David is taking over a mess, and boy, does he have his work cut out for him. After all these years, as an unlikely royal and warrior, David finally, officially becomes king. And his first task as leader is to capture a great city, the city of Jerusalem, and make it capital of a united Israel. The text describes the army's strategy, sneaking into the city through a water shaft until they occupied the stronghold. Their physical presence signaled the victory for David's army. Israel had been a mess of rivaling tribes and even civil war during Saul's reign, but under David, the people came together. Now, David was a great king, but one thing we know for sure is that David was tragically flawed. He was a murderer and an adulterer, allowing his anger and his lust to dictate his behavior in corrupt and sinful ways. As much as he was a great leader who brought this country together, he was also wretchedly corrupt. God called him as a man after God's own heart, but he could be truly evil as well. As people say, he was complicated. In order to really understand David, we have to acknowledge both the admirable parts and the wicked parts of his personality. I think the same could be said of our nation. The biggest change that we experienced after 9-11 is that we are, as a country, far more anxious now that we, than we ever were before. We had just come off the 1990s, a decade in which the Cold War ended the economy was booming, and America stood as a, the undisputed superpower. That, that all ended on 9-11. I said that prior to the event I was naive, but I think we all were to a certain extent. I truly believed that we were the shining city on a hill, 
I knew that other countries didn't like us, but I couldn't imagine why anyone in the world would see us as anything but decent and benevolent. It was an idealized and romanticized understanding of who we are on the world stage. Unfortunately, there are people and churches around the country that put the emphasis for the 4th of July on the worship of our nation rather than the worship of Jesus. They decorate their churches and even their altars with yards of red, white, and blue fabric. They sing songs that lift up their country, sometimes over the cross. There's absolutely nothing wrong with loving this country, but at the end of the day, it's God who gets the glory not any particular nation. God loves all the people, no matter where they are, they're from. Is this a Christian nation? Some would say so. And we do have Christian roots. But this country was founded on religious freedom. The idea that the government shouldn't meddle in the affairs of the church, not for the benefit of any particular religion, even the religion of many of the founders. As David took over as king of Israel, he knew that he had to find a way to focus the attention of his citizens and help them see themselves as a great nation with a purpose. That day in 2001, we did just that. We saw ourselves as one nation, indivisible, independent, and resolute. But in our innocence, we failed to see that we, like David, are complicated. We're a nation as David was a great king, but we can be wicked and sinful as well. And until we can hold both of those truths in tension with one another, we will continue to struggle. We are the nation that pulls together in a crisis, lending a hand in the face of natural and man-made disasters. But we are also the nation that hid the Tulsa massacre of 1921 from our history books. You know what I'm talking about, right? But in case you didn't, because I didn't know about it till a few years ago, the Tulsa Race Massacre occurred over 18 hours from May 31st to June 1st, 1921. Most of the city's 10,000 black residents lived in a neighborhood called Greenwood, which, was in, which included a thriving business district sometimes referred to as the Black Wall Street. A white mob attacked residents, homes, and businesses, burning 35 city blocks to the ground, killing an estimated 300 people and injuring hundreds more. The event remains one of the worst incidents of racial violence in the United, in the United States history and one of the least known. I didn't learn about it in school, and my guess is that few of you knew about it either. News reports were largely squelched, despite the fact that hundreds of people were killed and thousands left homeless. This is only one of many times our history was sanitized so that we could preserve the impression that we were a shining city on a hill. I know lots of people who still refuse to see our flaws and imagine our country as anything but perfect. I also know people whose emphasis is on our faults and who continuously complain about our errors. They're both right and they're both wrong. America is a great nation, full of incredible people and gifts for the world. We can also be arrogant and self-serving, seeing ourselves as superior and our ways as the right way to do things. The thing is that it's possible to believe that both things are true. Just like we see King David as a great ruler with some cracks in his visage, we can see our country, land of the free and the brave, as both broken and splendid. God knew all about David's flaws, and yet he called him a man after God's own heart. God knew that David was far from perfect, and yet he loved him with a pure and everlasting love. Personally, I think that's the healthy way of understanding our nation, flawed and imperfect, but worthy of great love and respect. 
So as we go forward today to whatever festivities we have planned, family get-togethers, cookouts, fireworks, let's remember how God was able to see past King David's shortcomings to his faithful, loving heart. And remember that God is watching over our dream-filled, imperfect, complicated nation as we struggle towards our future, whatever that may be. Amen. Thank you.